Hi, everybody, and welcome to the very first race of Splunk's Data Driver series. My name is Corey Minton, and I am an IT strategist at Splunk, and I'll be one of your hosts for this exciting series, and I'm joined by my good friend here. Hey, my name is Kyle Prince. I am also an IT strategist. Some might say a more strategic IT strategist, and I am stoked to be here, Corey. Thank you for having me on. I was going to say, you might be more of the IT and IT strategist. Uh, there it is. If I were honest. Well, we are excited <laughs> to invite you all to join us uh, on this exciting series. This is called Data Drivers. It's a combination of uh, iRacing and hackathons. And uh, you can get involved in the action simply by clicking the registration link down below. Today's race is coming to you from Barber Motorsports Park in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, virtually, of course, on the iRacing platform. And we've got an exciting field of drivers. Kyle, tell us a little bit about who we've got up in the uh, in the field today. Oh, well, it is a mix of friends and family of the Splunk community. Uh, so we have some Splunkers as well as some partners of Splunk, uh, customers of Splunk, as well as a ringer in there as well in number one right there. That's part right. of. He's one Go of those ahead. aliens. He's one of those aliens from uh, from the <laughs> McLaren Shadow Esports team. That's Tomic. He is a, a member of the team that actually drives in the series for McLaren in their Shadow Esports League. We're about to get started. As you can see, we've got some fantastically beautiful cars on track, some great-looking McLaren GT3 cars ready to go around the track here uh, at Barber. And during the race broadcast today, we're going to bring you into the fold and to so you understand really about what is this data drivers thing, uh, what to expect and what we're going to cover, and hopefully give you some tips on how to compete in iRacing. Well, we're about to get underway here. Kyle, it's going to be an exciting race. Let's see what happens as uh, Tomic leads us off, followed by John Hayward. John driving a beautiful car. Uh, is, that a, is that a boss of the sock car that John's driving? I believe so, and he's got it blacked out as well with those rims looking really good. Although I will say, I much prefer the white rims on mine as well, but Clearly. to each their own. <laughs> well, we are underway, headed through the carousel at Barber, and it looks like uh, I was actually able to jump a position on Jeremy, one of our great Splunk customers, to get out ahead in third place. Racing action coming through the carousel. You come kind of up over the hill. It's sort of a strange feeling where in real life the car gets really light. Uh, it comes down here to a tight hairpin, and uh, if you really want to know how to run this race, watch Tomic throughout the race. you got a long straightaway here where you're going to try to pick up some speed, and you're headed down to what we call the museum corner as you go through the, the corkscrew. The corkscrew goes downhill uh, into the museum, which is actually, we'll talk about it in a bit, the world's largest collection of vintage motorcycles actually lives in that fantastic museum. They're going to find their way down the back straight through the S's uh, and pick up some speed as they approach what is called the tunnel here in turn one. And as you can see, Kyle coming through the S's nice and clean there, stabbing those white uh, bumpers on each side of the track. Those are our target points uh, mm. for the racers. Now, one interesting thing I heard about this track is that it's an FIA certified track. Can you explain a bit about what that is, Corey? Because it was, it was a bit new to me, but I, I imagine you probably know a thing or two about this. Yeah, so it's actually one of uh, only two FIA certified tracks in the U.S., which FIA means it's the sanctioning body behind F1 and their racing. Uh, means it's long enough, it has enough turns and enough elevation change across uh, across its uh, its its duration that you could actually host an F1 race. They they say you could host an F1 race, you could actually have F1 practice uh, here as well. So pretty cool. But before we go too far into the racing, it looks like uh, Tomic is, you know, absolutely putting on a clinic. John Hayward putting a you know, getting a little bit of gap, almost four seconds gap between him and Tomic, and then the rest of the field is starting to drop back a little bit, a little bit here. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about, you know, what in the heck is this data drivers thing? It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of an exciting series, but it started Kyle before this. Like it, we we have a little bit of experience racing. Yeah, right? yeah. So it, you know, we. We started a little bit with Big Data Beard, always trying to start off with a little bit of a, a goofy trip to Conf. And uh, we, we did it in 2019 with the road trip where we jumped in the RV. And then obviously with the pandemic the past year, we needed to figure out a way to maybe hang out at home. And uh, 2020 rolled around and we decided, hey, much like the rest of the racing world, uh, transferring to a virtual platform, how could we make this a virtual road trip or a virtual race to Conf? And, uh, you, you know, we, we did a little bit of the Forza racing and a bit more of that gamey racing where we're having a good time. But uh, I did not realize just how realistic this 
platform is. Uh, but what we did was we set out, uh, got some friends and family up from Splunk uh, around the world. Ooh, tough. Kyle, tough spin there. Losing Ooh. Luke Testerman, a, a great Splunk engineer for one of our customers. He is able to sneak away from you. Yeah, the, the virtual race to conf was a, was a ton of fun, and I think we learned a lot in iRacing. But Data Drivers is really born out of this concept that I think we did something. We failed miserably <laughs> yeah. with virtual race to conf yeah. in one really uh, drastic and, and, and sort of interesting way. And that is, you know, we, the Big Data Beard team, spent a lot of time not only racing and inviting people to race, but we spent a lot of time getting hands on with Splunk and learning how to do some really interesting things with Splunk that maybe not everybody knows, like how to get, mm. you know, really unique and new custom data sources from modern web APIs uh, into Splunk. Then how to, you know, visualize that data using Splunk's powerful indexing tools uh, and visualizations to actually bring data to life in a, in a unique way uh, with racing data. Like how fun is it to talk about, you know, how fast a car is going, the, the performance of a car, like that stuff is great subject matter exp areas. But we didn't bring anybody in on the learning. Like, no, man, I learned a ton. Yeah, we, we didn't. So that's we, what this is about. Yeah, we did not democratize the knowledge well, which is also <laughs> why I'm really excited for data drivers now, because it's the next evolution of our fun around this, where we will be hosting uh, not only monthly races now, but monthly hackathons. So as you are enjoying the broadcast today, Join back tomorrow on uh, Splunk's Twitch stream, where we'll actually be playing with the data that was generated today. Now, Corey, can you talk a little bit around what the data was today and what we'll be diving into tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. So as Kyle said, we're going to have a monthly series. Uh, so each each month there will be a race on a Tuesday. Uh, the schedule is available on that event registration. Hmm. The broadcast of the race it happens on Thursday at noon Pacific, and then we get hands-on with the hackathon uh, on Friday. And this week, what we're going to be talking about is how do you actually get, we're going to start, you know, really where a lot of Splunk customers start in their journey, which is if you're going to use Splunk for an IT specific use case, you generally start with some basic infrastructure monitoring and troubleshooting. So you might need to use Splunk to bring in data from a variety of uh, platforms, whether it's Windows and Linux and your kind of data center to, you know, cloud-based orchestration technologies, Kubernetes and others, to your cloud stacks at AWS, Azure and GCP. And really what we're doing is we're going to use Splunk's infrastructure monitoring capability to actually deploy a smart agent on the gaming machine. So these are this iRacing Ooh, platform. Oh, tough. nasty wreck there. Jamie Howerton in third place gets messed up by some lap traffic. And, uh, and some other folks going around. And it looks like uh, me and Luke are the benefactors of that, uh, that nasty turn up. Now, it looks like Luke's going to try to take an inside line here to get by me. Oh, no, he's gotten in the grass, Holding. gets a little bit loose. Oh, it turns out I am the benefactor taking on third <laughs> place uh, from some spins. Maybe I can put some gap. But So what we're going to be doing, again, is uh, we're going to be looking at Splunk Infrastructure Monitoring. And we can bounce over to a, a quick screen to show you what you're going to expect. So you can actually start to pull system level detail data about what's happening in the gaming PC. So things that you would care about in infrastructure around CPU, memory utilization. Um, we're going to be looking at and challenging folks to actually go beyond just what's in the, uh, the smart agent that is uh, deployed for Splunk's uh, infrastructure monitoring and even do some custom things to pull in some more interesting data around GPU. So be sure to tune into that hackathon uh, tomorrow to get hands-on with Splunk infrastructure monitoring to monitor gaming PCs. Now, we're going to be going deeper. So as I said, it's a journey that we're taking customers on in data drivers and taking you uh, on in data drivers. And that is, okay, so I got the data in from my infrastructure. Cool. Like, kind of interesting. Right. But what would be more interesting than just infrastructure data, Kyle? Oh, man. Uh, I think one ridiculous thing that we started to pulled together was looking at the race as a service and then understanding what components of a car and the track and the weather that can play into that race. So I would say things as silly as, you know, your brake temperature, your brake pad temperature, all the way down to how much fuel you have left in your car. Because uh, with iRacing being the way it is, so realistic that even the weight of the fuel in your car changes how you handle it and it just gets to be super exciting to be able to see that drawn out over a graph which then will influence back how we drive so 
ideally it will push me a bit more from uh, that fifth place that we see right now, maybe up towards that first or second, if I can take a look at the data and get a better insight into it. Absolutely. So I'll say this, my excitement for you all to join us in Data Drivers, it's going to build, it's going to be progressive because Mm. as I said, it's a journey, right? We're starting with infrastructure. As Kyle said, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be pulling the data from the iRacing API. We found more than 300 different metrics you can pull about uh, race information. If you missed out on our uh, the Big Data Beard teams, Kyle and I presented at .conf this last year about this uh, API and all the data sets you can, or data uh, metrics you can pull in. Um, check it out. But we're going to be doing it in a new, unique way using Splunk Inframon and our mm-hmm. new metrics engine to actually pull that data in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring you along with us on a journey to deploy some of Splunk's most advanced capabilities that are interesting to our, our, our customers that are using Splunk for IT ops. So we're going to get the data in in next month's um, in next month's hackathon. Then we're going to start using IT service intelligence to build KPIs that matter. We're going to build services, as Kyle said, into what matters to an end user. And I'm excited to say that one of the things that is going to make this really realistic is that we're not just doing this in an abstract. We're not just doing this with no context of what matters, you know, in racing or in esports. I'm excited to tell you that we've actually got the manager of the McLaren Shadows Esports team, Tobin, to join us throughout the hackathons as our subject matter expert, who basically is going to act as our consumer. So we're going to go build data capabilities and insights and actionable intelligence for him as a manager of the team and as somebody who drove. And Tobin, super interesting uh, kind of career. You're going to hear more from him tomorrow. Started the eSports at 16, made a profession out of it, paid for university, and is now uh, leading the team. So super excited to have him uh, join us as well. Now, we've had a little bit of a shakeup here. The middle of the pack is really where all the action is at. So Tomic is absolutely out in front, putting on a clinic, looking like he's got a more than almost 30 second gap between him and John Hayward. Uh, what's interesting, Tomic and John, both A licensed drivers uh, in uh, iRacing. Kyle, what does that mean? Like A racing, like that should mean something to people, right? Yeah, yeah. So with iRacing being such a simulation platform, you actually have to earn your license levels to be able to race with more advanced players. So uh, people like myself and Corey, just starting out in kind of this simulation world, we started out with a recruit license, uh, and then from there you go through a series of weekly races where you have to skill yourself up and earn uh, faster, more aggressive, maybe even more dangerous cars that that can be. Uh, that can require a bit more expertise to handle. Uh, Because remember, this is a lot more realistic than any other game you've seen. This is a simulation platform. Uh, So yeah, you'll work your way up from recruit to D class to C class, B all the way up to A class. And A class is really where you'll see the professionals start to hang out there. Uh, Corey, how have you enjoyed uh, moving from recruit to D class? Uh, Have you found that fun? Is it a bit more challenging for you? Uh, what, What are you experiencing through that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, the, the, it's fun to have to you know, drive a Miata. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, they're slow and they're challenging. But in real life, that's exactly how you would, uh, you would start in racing is with a slower car that's more of a momentum car so that you learn how to you know, kind of go through corners appropriately, not relying on a high horsepower you know, sort of car to make up for your mistakes and really learning how to control mm. momentum in the corner. So great, great analog to real life. And frankly, like I, that's one of the things that I've loved about this sim racing all along has been how much of a true analog it is to real life racing. I, I spend hmm. a lot of time on a on a racetrack, or I shouldn't say a lot. I spend as much time as possible on a racetrack <laughs> in, a, in a track car, uh, actually at Barber. So Barber's my home track that I get to race on a few so, times a year. So a little bit of a home field advantage here, huh? <laughs> it's a little bit unfair. Uh, the fact that I'm in third right now makes me feel really good. Uh, yeah. I would hope to finish in a podium here. Um, but I know that there's some great drivers out there as well. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's super fun. I encourage folks to check it out. And what you'll find out is that um, the skills that you build in sim racing uh, are, are very useful in real-time racing. And that is like, that's the moral of the story with data drivers is what, what we're going to do here in this series is absolutely transferable to your day job. So if you'll join us, not only for the racing, the racing's fun, but the racing is honestly what you're seeing on screen today is the out, it's really the data generation portion of Mm. our series because we need fun data to play with. Um, But what you'll see in the broadcast going forward is we'll start to feature more and more 
of the dashboards and the things that we build in the hackathon together showcased in the broadcast. You'll start to see things like KPIs. So we'll start to see in the race in real time, how are things going for different cars and drivers? You'll start to see service visualization. So understanding the interconnectedness of those KPIs. Um, and you'll start to then build visualizations that could be useful to a team manager or even a driver in the background to start to see you know, things that matter and then turning all that into action. Well, guess what? Mm. That's interesting for racing. Sure. What we're going to do here, like that's super fun. But it's absolutely relevant to folks in IT. If you're a, you know, an SRE trying to figure out how to, you know, run an e-commerce service effectively so that your company can, you know, take in revenue and sell products, you want to build those same capabilities. So hopefully you'll join us to to get hands on with Splunk because Splunk's data to everything platform is uniquely positioned to do exactly that uh, for you and your industry and, and for your needs. And so hopefully this is a fun <laughs> excuse for you to, to come racing with us to uh, to get hands on with some data and a fun uh, fun sort of story. Um, yeah, and I, I think one thing to call out there too with this data driver series is that, you know, you can race with us and we would encourage you to do that. You know, obviously iRacing can take a bit of a commitment and, and getting everything set up. But if, if you're just enjoying to play with the data, you know, join us again for the hackathon. Racing is not required. Please get your hands dirty with the data. Maybe you can find some interesting areas that we're not talking about. And we would challenge you to bring those up to us. And maybe we can chat with Tobin and see how relevant those specific use cases are to a esports team manager uh, mentality here. So yeah, very excited for this. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's funny. One of the things uh, you'll hear tomorrow uh, when we talk to Tobin um, is that there is there's so much of a parallel between esports and in real life, but what what I think was was something that's prescient that you'll hear him say um, is he t- he talks about how if we aim for like delivering things that would when we think about it matter to like an F one team like McLaren's mm-hmm. F one team, we're probably going to make stuff that matters to a to an esports team, right. and which is cool like that's kind of fun that you know hey we're shooting for the stars. You shoot for the stars, you'll land on the moon, right? Or whatever they say. Uh, maybe it's reversed. But we're, we're aiming to do something really, really, uh, you know, real and relevant. Um, but what's crazy to me is that when we started talking to these, uh, to these folks, you know, at McLaren, obviously Splunk has a great partnership with McLaren and McLaren Racing. You see it on the beautiful McLaren uh, F1 car. Uh, we're excited to be partners with them. Hmm. Uh, we were great partners with them during the virtual race to comp. But if you missed it, Splunk is actually now a partner of the McLaren Shadow Esports team as well. And so they're participating with us, and we're going to be building things that they're hopefully going to use. But what blew me away is how big of a deal esports is. Yeah. It's, Kyle, let's talk about it. How big yeah. of a deal is esports? Oh, I, so I ran some numbers because you always hear, you know, just, hey, it is super important. It's growing a lot. The raw numbers is it is 2021 has done huge growth for it. We're expecting almost half uh, half a billion viewers in 2021. It's growing about nine, 10% every year, which is just astronomical. Now you had the number for revenue, right? Yeah, this is, they're expecting the total competitive revenue for esports to be over a billion (laughs) dollars. Like this is, this is no longer like it's not a bunch of kids playing games on no. you know, and, and broadcasting on Twitch, which we're super excited to be on Twitch, is, you know, Splunk's Twitch channel. But it's a it's a billion dollar industry. And not only is it a, a billion dollar industry and it's great for the athletes, which, by the way, they can make the top 10 athletes all made over three hundred thousand dollars last year. The top earner is a, a gentleman named Sven Carlson who plays chess online made over half a million dollars last year. I mean, there's the, some of the top earners have earned over, you know, $7 million in their, in their life cycle of, wow. Of and as you'll hear from Tobin, like he paid for his university with, uh, with esports. So, you know, parents, I've got young kids. Apparently there is something to play in video games. If you, uh, if you try hard and you get good enough, absolutely. Um, but what I'm to... seeing on screen on the race though, is I don't think Kyle, you and I have a chance of uh, paying for anything with esports. You no. have been doing good. You've, you've jumped to fourth place after Luke and I both took some spins. I'm down to sixth place. And guess what? We are all, all but one person on the track is down a lap to Tomic. John Hayward still holding on to roughly about a 40 second, uh, advantage from being lapped mm. over Tomic. Tomic has lapped every one on the track. It is an absolute clinic that he's putting on. I can't he wait is, to get my hands on his data. Yeah, he is just consistent. 
is what I'm noticing. And, you know, we've always heard about the first turn heroes. And as I've learned and grown a bit as a racer, I, I'm learning that consistency is key here. But if you go back and rewatch Tomic or, you know, take a look at his data, it is just astronomical to see how consistent he is across this track whether he's working through other cars or events on the track or, or changes in the track temperature he can keep relatively same lap times which is just amazing yeah it absolutely is and and for those of you kind of watching this this broadcast if you've noticed uh, hopefully we should have talked about it earlier some pretty cool overlays that we've got uh, built hmm. all based on the iRacing SDK and so the iRacing, um, iRacing exposes an API that yes. allows developers to pull data, uh, both in real time from the the player cl- the, the 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 iRacing cloud that it's that's operating in, but also from uh, from the replays that you run locally. So I'm actually using here to create this video. We're using a, a platform called SDK Gaming. Uh, our friends, shout out to Apex Racing and their team. Uh, behind the scenes who built this platform actually should look pretty familiar to what you saw in the virtual race to dot com. Um, we're using this platform to actually pull data from the replay file that I stored on my uh, on my machine when racing. And it's exposing this brilliant timetable for us, a leaderboard. Uh, whenever we switch to a different driver, clearly we can start to see, you know, metrics. About the drivers. And, oh, uh oh, John Labaugh takes out Luke Testerman uh, as he tries to take him in traffic. And it looks like, Kyle, you are the benefactor. I get held up a little bit of there at coming out of the corkscrew as you head right down to the tunnel. Oh, you're coming through the S's here. Yeah, and, and at this point, I, I'm just trying to keep that consistency as key here, and we'll see how we go. Absolutely, Kyle. Hope you can uh, stay consistent. But I want to invite everybody to join us here tomorrow on Splunk's Twitch stream for the hackathon. We're going to get hands-on with the data, as we've talked about, from these gaming rigs with Splunk infrastructure monitoring, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Looks like Tomic coming towards the end of the race. Looks like he's got this one sewed up with a big gap. But I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a battle here, Kyle. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've got you hot on my tail. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'll see if I can hold my own or if I get in my head. There you uh, go. We're coming around the carousel. And oh, oh, and you go a little wide, opening up an opportunity for me to get around to the outside in the straightaway just across from the pits. Spectators can see it, but let's go in in a blimp view. Wow. Looks like, Kyle, will you? You did. You oh. held your line. This is impressive. Maybe the first time in history you've actually held your line. <laughs> well, practice makes perfect here, you know? So. Well, as it turns out, I didn't actually do very well. You held your line, and I slowed down too much and clearly built a huge gap between uh, you and myself. So maybe you'll be able to hold on to it. Looks like you're having a little trouble in the corkscrew. I'm able to get right on your bumper again. Yeah. And yeah. I will say it's fun to see this map up here at the right just in real time. It's updating so we know who's the closest action so we can really focus our efforts. Here we're coming up through the S's into a straight of where we can catch a lot of speed. I think this is a good chance for me to make a move. Oh, we're going up top. Looks like I'm going to dive Oop. in. Oh, Kyle swings wide. Doesn't. Oh, he held his line in. Oh, I just. Oh. My bad. I I'm may out. have bumped you uh, on that <laughs> May. One may have we, we we'll look will, at the data <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> well for sure no looks like i'm the benefactor there to get into fourth place the checkered flag is out folks and congratulations to tomic from the mclaren shadow esports team for showing us what a professional looks like on the track <laughs> and a big congrats to john hayward the uh we like to call him the silent assassin he's quiet on the on the discord during the race but man the dude puts in lap times mm. I want to invite everybody, like I said, come back and join us tomorrow on the Twitch stream to get hands-on with the data. And frankly, if you don't even want to get hands-on, you just want to learn, come and hang out with us. And I want to remind everybody as well, we've got another race coming up on April 27th is the race. So if you want to join us uh, in your racing sim, make sure you, uh, you, you sign in via the event registration below so we can give you the session details. Look for the broadcast on April 29th. Uh, to uh, to watch that race here on Splunk's Twitch and then come back and join us on April 30th for our next hackathon where we actually build some custom scripting to get data from iRacing's API into Splunk uh, for our metrics monitoring to really be the basis for all the things we're going to mm. build. Kyle, it was a lot of fun to race with you here at Barber Motorsports Park. Sorry Always about a the pleasure. at the end. <laughs> All right. I'll get you back next time. That's right. Well, hopefully you guys can join us and have some fun uh, on the hackathon and learn something. As we said, 
you know, this esports thing, this sim racing, it's transferable in real life. And hopefully what you'll find is data drivers will help you build the skills necessary to use Splunk's incredible data to everything platform for IT operations use cases, but learning using fun racing data. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Splunk's Data Drivers.